Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Hi, everybody. Wendy Sellers here with my friend JC on today's podcast. We are going to be discussing recruiting tips, successful recruiting tips. Uh, And the main hint here is to get organized. We are going to review quite a few of very interesting turnover statistics for these costly new hires, as well as turnover statistics for people who leave on their own so they quit the organization. We're gonna talk a little bit about benefits and marketing of these benefits and the company as a whole, compensation research, which is so vital. Uh, We're gonna finish up with talking about interview questions that you need to train your managers not to ask. And then finally, a reminder that getting and giving feedback truly is a two-way street. All right, so I got a question for you here. You know, a lot of people who are um, listening to this right now might not necessarily be in advertising, in sales, in marketing. They're listening to to all the words of wisdom. They're, They're taking excellent training courses. They're getting up to speed. But they don't have that that million dollar skill set to write that perfect that that absolutely perfect job ad that they're they're coming to you to say i want to get this out there what are some of the best ways that they can move forward with getting help in in writing that attractive sales piece and 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 getting that crafted in a way you already touched on it with some of the methodologies earlier in in, in the other pieces there but um you know i what do you recommend So one of my first recommendation is go to the internet and type in your job title that you're trying to um, fill and see what's out there, see what other people are advertising. And when you look at your competitor or somebody you don't know, and you look at their job ad and you go, that looks boring or that's complicated. I don't understand what any of this is. Do the opposite of them. (laughs) (laughs) And then when you see a job ad that's amazing, you're like, man, I want to work for this company follow their steps. You know, we do not have to reinvent the wheel, but we do, you know, recruiting is marketing. Recruiting is sales. Recruiting is advertising. And uh, you have to, you know, have a good marketing piece to attract somebody to take that double look at your job ad and say, I want to click around on their website. And oh my goodness, I want to apply there now because A, they seem amazing. They have pictures of what I'll be doing. They have seem to have a cool environment, uh, virtual or not. There's pictures of employees on there. Side note, if you have pictures of employees on your website anywhere, please make sure you get their permission and talk to maybe an attorney and their Excellent legal point. department on that <laughs> because you don't want to be you know, uh, advertising them if they leave and then they say, uh, you don't have permission to put me up there on your website. Um, And then also make sure that it's, you know, crystal clear, the reporting structure, where the, where the position is located physically, if it is remote, if it's a hybrid, what days they need to be in the office. So being as transparent as possible, um, either with a downloadable like PDF or a brochure, um, the easiest way, even for the small companies that are listening is just go uh, create like a um, a really basic, like a GoDaddy website or whoever, what a, I use GoDaddy and it's super, super easy to change things and make your website look amazing. Um, but you can do that for fairly cheap and maybe that's just your recruiting platform and it's not um, connected to your other website. I would prefer it be connected to both. But if you're struggling, you can start from scratch and have some kind of even a Google form where they go in and, and answer questions or they're able to retrieve something and say, oh, there's our benefits brochure or here's our employee um, our, our employee relations brochure. That's an excellent point right there. Hey, within those, uh, within those postings, within the job descriptions, within the information that you're putting out to the public, it's probably not a good idea to 
advertise what the salary is up front, right? You want you want to hold that close to the vest and 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 get them in the oh, door yeah. first, I mean, right? No, top, top secret, <laughs> top secret. My goodness, I want to jump through the and we phone see right that. now and like. <laughs> you, you, no, I know you talked about that earlier too. We see it all the time. Uh, you're you're into that twelve step program, and it's not for uh, you know something that you shouldn't be doing. This twelve step program is twelve clicks. Just to try to yeah. find out that you can't get the information you need on how much this job is going to pay. And one of the interesting yeah. things, too, is there's an overbearing fear sometimes within an organization that employees are actually prohibited from discussing your pay. And it, it, I just want to put this out there. Employees do have the right to discuss their salary. It's protected by law. And while employers may restrict workers from discussing their salary in front of customers during work, they can't prohibit employees from talking about pay on their own time. That is a separate topic, but I did want to just thread that in there real no, quick. No, it's actually, it's a it's a great point, JC, because I, I many employers don't know this. Um, the, you know, the ability to, to, to talk about your salary, uh, your pay, specifically related to possible concerns of maybe discrimination or unfair practices is protected by the National Labor Relations Act, the NLRA, which is not only for union environments, but non-union. Many people think that it's only for union workers, and it's not. Um, and the NLRA is hot, hot, hot all over people since the beginning of the pandemic. And so please, 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 if you have executives who don't want to list compensation in your, in your um, job ads, uh, first of all, you need to look to see if, it, if you're required to do that by law in your state, um, there is a growing, yeah, so there's a growing number of states and localities that now require by law employers to disclose pay or pay ranges for positions um, either in their ads or specific to their to their candidates. My rule of thumb is I will not work with clients who do not have their pay listed in their job ads. Um, I know there's a there was a, a heated debate about this not too long ago uh, between some people that you and I know, JC, on LinkedIn. Um, people were asking me to share their job ads. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Your job ad does not list compensation. And that is completely against my beliefs. I am 100% about transparency. And I am not going to help you fill a position if you don't have the pay pay list it. And, and why and waste I, anyone's time? Why why right? waste anyone's time in that process? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so, okay, let's just say you can't get your executives to agree to that and you're not in a state that requires that. Um, then at least have the ability that if they contact HR or the recruiter, that the recruiter can then say, but this is the range, you know, but I, you know, rule of thumb really should be to be transparent. Uh, why? Not only so you get the candidate interested and the ones that are not interested because of the pay, you're not wasting your time and your resources on looking over their resume, contacting them, trying to interview them for them to just say, what's the pay? No, nope, peace out. I'm done. You've wasted all your time. But uh, above and beyond that, um, we talked to, about, you know, managers being the ones that are able to affect um, retention and then, you know, obviously recruiting as well because of the, the word of mouth. If you are, if you have managers or any other, any human being, whether they're management or not, if you have a human being recruiting and helping in the interview process of employees or candidates, um, whether internal or external, and they decline to give compensation and it's required by law, you're getting yourself in trouble. Yeah. But not only that, if they say, well, hey, I'm not required to, my company's not releasing it. And so I'm just going to keep that close to my vest. And um, I have an employee that uh, or th my, my budget is, um, I don't know, $50,000. Uh, and I have a candidate that says, oh, I only want $38,000. Oh, and this candidate over here says, I want $49,000. And the manager chooses the $38,000 one. But you have other positions same exact positions are that are closer to 50 grand. And by the way, that candidate that said, yeah, I'll come in for 38 right. because they didn't know the range happens to be of a, a minority of some sort um, you know, with ability, disability. Um, you know, it could be sexual orientation, race, whatever it might be. Now you're unintentionally 
unconsciously violating people's rights and you may open yourself up to a giant lawsuit Huge. on discrimination just because you didn't say here is the range it should be 46,000 to 50,000 no higher no lower i have to refer to the books this all comes from her mind i'm telling you <laughs> beautiful mind right there hey here's here's uh just to piggyback on a few things that you were saying right there uh new york state Lawmakers did pass a bill that requires private sector employers in the state to disclose salary ranges on job postings. That was as of June 2022. California, Maryland, they require employers to provide the pay scale to applicants upon reasonable request. And from the employee's perspective, uh, the Department of Labor, they have an amazing fact sheet out about Executive Order 11246. Once again, Executive Order 11246. Sounds like I'm calling bingo numbers. I know. <laughs> um, it states in there, though, that you do have the right to inquire about, discuss, or disclose your own pay or that of other employees or applicants. I want to make sure we emphasize that last part, or applicants. So there is a large push to make sure this stuff's on the table. This is a beautiful segue. When we're thinking about the job interview, okay, the actual interview now and the questions that are going to be on the table, pay could turn out to be one of those. And yep. we've touched on it already just a little bit, but I've got a million dollar question for you here. Let's say uh, you you find your candidate and I, I do want to circle back to the exact questions and dissect that further coming up in one moment if you have the time. Mm -hmm. But if, if the discussion heads down the path of salary and you're beginning to negotiate and and you've come to terms and now you're bringing this employee on board for x amount of dollars a year and it it is not in line with what you were initially offering but if it's within the scale this is just good information to help bring that employee on and you move forward or should you start to keep track of that data and information use that as historical record to help propel and, and move forward with the upgrading of of your compensation packages your your salary structures and things like that you mm -hmm. know if, if you continue to have people come in the door and they turn the job down due to the salary range and you're having to negotiate again and again and again uh, the writing's on the wall use yep. that play money ball use those statistics to make things better right right yeah, that's exactly it. And especially for those of you that are listening that have a small company and you don't have all these fancy tools, you can literally just start in a, a spreadsheet and say, okay, well, we have this position and maybe it's a, you know, you have that same position over and over again. And this is how many times I had to negotiate or renegotiate. And uh, this is why we're not getting people. Here's another thing about pay too. Um, there is actually um, laws that ban you asking your candidates what they previously made and most organizations do not know that and many organizations their application says what did you make at this job and it can be 100 percent illegal i actually wrote a uh, a quick little blog about it on my website dhrlady.com um it was in april but it was actually not me that created this list. It's a company called HR Dive. And so if you go to hrdive.com, they have great information about salary bans um, and about all the laws regarding the salary bans. But in, um, I think it was around April, there's a new law that it comes out in January 1st in the state of Washington that says employers must include a wage scale or a salary range along with information about benefits and compensation in their job posting. Uh, this state joins Colorado and New York City, so not New York State, but the city, in requiring employers to disclose pay ranges in job posts. And then, again, remember, make sure you know your laws in your locale, not just your state, but possibly your county and city, of can you ask what somebody else's previous pay was? Ooh, uh, with a candidate's previous pay. Yeah. yeah. And so, I, I mean, here's my thing is if you did the, the salary research, you've done the compensation research, you've um, adjusted the job, maybe your managers are expecting way too much and you as HR and executive stepped in and say, you know what? No, 
this job description is unrealistic and this is why people are failing, quitting, getting fired, whatever. Um, let's change the job so that it's realistic, that we can get the knowledge, skills and abilities and or train and that people can do the all of the responsibilities um, and not be an all in one. And we this happens a lot with small businesses that we just throw everything at somebody who says, yeah, I'll do it. Right. Well, that person might be successful, but you're rarely going to be able to duplicate that, you know? And so when you go to duplicate it, you realize that that employee who is now disgruntled and possibly quit was actually doing two or three jobs. <laughs> right, but right. For, but for the pay of one. Yeah. And so that's why it's so important to do the compensation research, because when you're doing that, that is when you should right size your job description duties, the title, whatever it is. Again, I'm not I don't really care so much about the title. I care about what are you asking them to do? Are we are we vetting that out in an interview? Um, are we holding them accountable? Are we training them? And then are we giving them that pat on the back? preferably with a dollar sign <laughs> so that they stay and so that, that re they refer other people. But please make sure after listening to this podcast that you go and research your states to say, what are the laws regarding asking past salaries about putting salaries on, um, on job ads? And even if you don't have laws in your state or locale, make sure that you know that it is the right thing to do if you are touting that you're a transparent workplace, then you should, your compensation should be transparent as well. And then guess what, JC? Who cares if employees talk about it? Because everybody already knows we're a transparent workplace. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you for joining the HR Empowerment Podcast, brought to you by Aurora Training Advantage. We hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the HR profession. We look forward to you joining us again on the HR Empowerment Podcast.